Hey guys, so what I just wanted to do today was um, show you this quick repair I'm doing on this Rygar PCB. Um, and I don't know if the video is going to pick it up well enough, but you can probably possibly tell there that there's like brown jail bars running throughout all the graphics. Uh, it'll change in a moment to like the... Yeah, there you go. See that background should be black, and you've got like the jail bars and everything, so... Um, what I'm going to do is just give you a few sort of little... Um, tips and tricks I guess you can use to possibly fix um, one of your PCBs that's got this problem um, or similar issues uh, it's never the same thing twice so don't get too excited or anything but you know this can hopefully point you in the right direction um, basically this on this Rygar PCB this is upside down this is the back uh, the bottom board of the board set and I don't know if you can tell but there's lots of ROMs uh, lined up here and these are all um, I think actually these are all background ROMs, but some of them might be sprite ROMs because this RAM over here deals with sprites, um, and I know that because I've been sort of looking at the board at um, the RAMs because RAMs are sometimes uh, an issue. And this is a RAM, this is a RAM, this up here is a RAM, um, and you know this. The model number on this one is D4016C. Can't really focus on that, but it's an NEC chip. Um, and you kind of, after a while, you, you sort of recognise the numbers, but if you don't recognise what a number is or something that you suspect may be faulty because it's getting warm or something, um, do just do a Google search on the um, the number and you, oftentimes you can find a data sheet for it, which is really useful because then you can find out what um, each leg's supposed to be doing, what the specifications of the chip are, etc, etc. Um, but for this repair, basically what I did is, um, it's... More often than not, it's not the ROMs um, on the, on these boards that's the issue because the ROMs are, you know, they're reasonably durable. They don't tend to fail nearly as much as uh, Logic ICs do. Logic ICs are probably the, one of the main causes, I would say, um, other than physical jam damage. Um, and inspecting this board, I can't see any physical damage. I can't see any ROMs that have got uh, bent pins uh, or dirty pins or, you know, dodgy sockets or any... I've looked underneath the board as well, and there's no um, poor connections. So it's, you know, basically it's time to get out uh, this little fella here. And this is a logic probe, and this is probably next to the multimeter and the soldering iron. This is probably the most important tool I've got. Um, and basically, what this will do is this end here, if you were to. Um, poke it onto one of the legs, being careful not to bridge legs of course um, it will give you an audible and visual um, readout of what that chip's doing so um, for an example um, a really useful feature of this is if you were to um, place it on like an input or an output of a um, like a small op amp or something you can actually hear the sound even if it's not coming through the amplifier, you can actually hear the sound get into there. So that can tell you that you know something further along in the chain is at fault. But let me just hook this up briefly. Um, the good thing about these is that on all all boards, pretty much you're going to find some, uh, test points or somewhere you can hook up uh, the leads to. This takes um, uh, it's just normal power and ground, uh, res power, black's ground, obviously. Um, but basically. Uh, when you find your power point, you want to make sure it's this going to be the same voltage that you know the rest of the board's using. So a good point here is this capacitor, because you've got five volt on this side, and then you've got ground on the other side there. So if I just get this out, now I've already been through this board and I found this chip here, which is a uh, oh, it's a quad flip flop. Well, I can't remember now, but it's. Uh, an LS273 and what this basically does is takes the data and it, it splits it off into various other chips and it goes down the line to the graphics processor and um, basically what I did was um, I probed this with the, the data sheet uh, on the computer and I was able to find out that pin 1 is power so that's fine pin 2 that's a data input that's fine pin 3 um, not entirely sure what that was actually, forgive me, uh, but pin 4 is a data input and basically what that red light means is that that's high so 5 volts is um, 
be, being applied to or coming out of where well, it's being applied to because this is the an input um, to this chip. Now I know that that shouldn't be the case because this needs that particular input to then process extra data. Um, so tracing it back I actually discovered that it led to one of the data lines on this ROM. Now all of these ROMs are connected together via address lines and what address lines do is they basically just tell um, the system that's accessing the chip where in the chip it needs to go for what particular portion of data and the data lines is the actual data that comes out and these are all separate so th with this chip um, what I'm just going to quickly do uh, pause the video briefly and I'll just extract the chip and I'll show you what the difference is okay so I extracted the chip and as you can see by the screen those horrible jail bars are gone but obviously there's data missing because I've pulled the ROM out um, so basically what I'm just going to want to do now is to uh, put, put that ROM into MAME, uh, not into MAME sorry, into um, take the MAME ROM set and get that ROM and burn it to a new ROM, stick it in and that should repair the board but um, another thing you can do if you, you, know, you aren't entirely sure and you happen to have a ROM programmer um, is you can actually take the um, this ROM, you can read it into MAME, or rather read it in and zip it up and put it into MAME. Um, one of the older versions is probably best because the newer versions check for CRCs. If the CRC is wrong, um, you know it's not quite what it expects, then it won't run the game. But older versions of MAME will still go ahead and run it anyway. And what it will probably do is replicate the problem that we had exactly in MAME. So that's another good way of telling. Um, MAME's actually really useful for troubleshooting older games in lots and lots of different ways. Um, but yeah, what I'll just quickly do now is I'll uh, burn that ROM and I'll plop it in and I'll show you the repaired board. Okay, so I've burned the replacement ROM and there it is sat in there. And as you can see, the game now runs fine. Um, this didn't actually work straight away though. Um, basically, uh, whenever there's a dodgy ROM on a board, I turn to MAME and get the um, relevant ROM from the MAME ROM set, burn it and everything's fine. With Rygar, however, um, it turns out the ROMs are not, well, not numbered, yeah, I guess they're numbered incorrectly. Um, these all have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. on them. Um, MAME doesn't do that. Um, it does sometimes, but in this particular case, it goes by the um, the grid reference on the end of the board. Um, so this is column six or row six, and this one would be pretty much F. So that'd be six F. Um, in MAME, six F is actually six N. I believe they've got them completely backwards. So after a lot of head scratching and not quite knowing what was going on, um, yeah, basically I managed to get it uh, working correctly, and the game is now actually running okay, which is somewhat a relief. <laughs> um, I was getting a little bit concerned that I might have to actually, uh, I don't know, look online or post on a forum or something, but it ended up okay. Um, so just for uh, shits and giggles I guess uh, I'm going to run this in MAME with the ROM that I've dumped it's probably going to come up fine yeah it's coming up fine now oh, that's typical no well it's got some sort of an error there I guess basically it's because whenever I read the ROM, um, it was slightly different every time, and I'm guessing that's because it's just, you know, I don't know, it's just it's behaving erratically anyway. But this ROM in here works just fine, and it's running great. In fact, I don't know if you can see it there. You can just about see there were some jail bars on some of the sprites. Um, I did actually dump it twice the first time because it never verifies itself. The second, first time I did it. Um, it was only the background that was screwed up but yeah MAME's a pretty useful tool um, when you're sort of you know, troubleshooting these games I use version uh, 111B you can see there um, but yeah anyway to, uh, to summarize I guess 
get yourself a logic probe. Uh, these are totally, totally, you know, I definitely say, I mean, I've got a scope, um, I've got various, like a ROM burner and all the rest of it. This is by far one of the best tools that I've bought so far for repairing arcade games. And pretty much, you know, once you know how to repair arcade games, if you have similar problems with a home console, then you're going to be able to um, apply the same methods to those because they're basically exactly the same. Um, in theory, you know, in sort of terms of architecture, etc. Uh, but yeah, get yourself one of these, they're really useful. And if you can, get one with a, a beep function or a sound function because obviously it's really useful to just hear it rather than just look at it. I mean, I can hear that's a signal, I can hear that's low, that's ground, and I can hear that that's high and that's power. Um, but yeah, just for relev uh, relevance, that's not the right word, just to. Um, just to show you what this input now does, it's not that it's actually low for the moment because it's not on the game screen. Um, I'll just wait until the game screen comes back up. Uh, but yeah, totally one of the best things I've bought and I definitely recommend getting one. Let's have a look. Alright, so yeah, it's now putting data through it because the game screen's up. And the output also picking data out but anyway um, I just basically wanted to show you guys that uh, I guess we'll wrap it up there um, I do also want to add that you know I'm not a professional I'm not trained to do any of this um, the only reason I do it is simply because um, I've had so many sort of broken boards over the years and broken consoles that you know it's it's gratifying to repair them it's a hobby it's something that I do for fun and you know, it's there definitely are going to be better methods of doing this out there. Um, you know, a lot of technical people are probably going to be looking and cringing, saying that I didn't do this right, I didn't do that right. But then, you know, when you're self-taught, you basically do what you can, and hopefully, um, I'm going to be able to, you know, transfer some of the, my knowledge over to someone else so that um, even more boards can be saved. But um, I guess that's about it for now since we've run on quite a while and uh, I'll put up another video soon and thanks for watching.